I got so many videos to make, but there's one in particular that I have to get out today. Man, why do I look so crappy in this camera? My hair is not all white like this, and I'm, I don't look Trump boring. Anyways, let's back to the video. Today, I'm gonna review this guy. It's a pure sine wave power inverter by Giandel. Let's do it. All right, so this is a model PS-3000KAR. It's pure sine wave power inverter from Giandel. 24 volts, that's what I requested because that's what works with our lithium batteries. And so that's the one that we got. Let's take this apart. Let's take it out of the box. All right, so that's what you get. The user manual, some card here. This is, which is a remote controller, basically, right? You can put this somewhere else. These are good for RVs. And so you might put this somewhere out in the back of the vehicle. And then you just simply put this uh, in the front. And then you also get two cables and little rubber feet. Also some screws. So first, let's look at the physical dimensions of this guy. If you wanted to install it somewhere, these are gonna be very useful. So, I mean, the unit itself is 17 inches, but with the cables and then the things over here, realistically, you need about 22 inches length. How about 11 inches wide by four inches tall, right? Let's uh, weight this guy. There we go, 13 pounds. Uh, 6.8 ounces so almost 14 pounds by the time you're all done looking at the actual unit here on the side this is the first time that i get one of these that has ability to have a hardwire it has a terminals here to the screw terminals which is very cool right that way you can pull all 3000 watts uh because obviously these type of connector cannot handle that kind of power i think these top off at 1500 so two of them combined can do 3000 but if you want all 3000 from one single device then you'll have to use this hardwired thing obviously a power button here and then this one will show you the input voltage output voltage and output watt rating in here it's got a usb plug in here so that you can also just plug in your whatever a usb peripherals and use them and then obviously the remote control plug in here so that you can install this skype on the other side, you got the two fans, right? Because it's important to these guys to get cooling and the two terminal, the DC terminal posts. And these are pretty standard uh, posts. On the inside, well, that's what it looks like. Mm -hmm. I am not really gonna go into detail here as to what it's in here because okay let's face it i have no idea what any of this stuff is i mean i have a rough idea right those are the capacitors those are transformers this is an inductor or chokes and then the mosfets right some of those are igbt some of those might be uh who knows if you're more knowledgeable than me then you might be able to see if this is a good layout if it's got good design or not as far as i can go is to tell you that that's what it looks like from the inside uh one good thing i will comment it will be in the cable size 12 gauge four five six so there's six 12 gauge cables feeding the unit from the main power terminals going inside and of course six 12 gauge cables on the negative side ac side is the same thing 12 gauge cable going out we can look at a cable chart to see if it'll support if it's enough to support the 3000 watts that this might be able to deliver right so now that we got this out of the way, let's plug it all in and then put it to the test. All right, let's discuss our setup here. I have built this battery here to test our 3000 watt inverter, right? This is 24 volts, which means that it's designed to work on two 12 volt lead acid batteries in series, but that can be used with lithium batteries, you use seven cells in series. So these are 7S uh, circuit boards. It's a system that I designed. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. All these batteries are coming up through their BMS boards and then coming into this combiner or power strip 
uh, PCB. And so then that is then coming through these high quality silicon welding cables, right? And it's gonna go through this, which is a Hall effect sensor, which is gonna then give us how much energy is going through there and how much power. And then we're gonna be using the cables that came with this inverter because I wanna test how good or how bad. I wanna test the quality and compare them to high quality welding cable, right? So we will be able to test the temperature and, and this part of the circuit and then test the temperature on this part. So that's the setup. 24 volt battery there uh, using their cables. Here's the inverter. First thing that we want to test is going to be the sine wave. This is a pure sine wave inverter, right? Let's see how clean that wave looks under this scope here. Let's turn the scope on, the inverter. Oh, look at that. But that's not bad at all. That looks pretty smooth. All right, for comparison, here is the Giandel 2000 watt inverter. This is modified sine wave. And here we go, look at that. That is what a modified sine wave looks like uh, out of these inverters. So we're gonna use this uh, heater as a load, as long as well as this uh, heat gun, right? This is 1500 watts. I think that one over there is also 1500 or 2000 watts. Let's test these guys. Oh, there we go. Okay, so that's the first setting that is using 19 amps, uh, which is 500 watts, 460 watts, right? So 500 going in from the battery, 460 coming out. So we can calculate the, uh, the efficiency of this guy. Okay, let's test the second mode here. Oh, so 39 amps, that's one kilowatt right there. Uh, and you can see the voltage. This one says 27 volts, but this one's saying 26.7. All right, here we go. So a thousand watts, let's do number three. All right, 58 amps, uh, 1.5 kilowatt. Okay, so that's... Uh, 1500 watt uh, heater, right? Let's do our little thing here. Ooh, this room's gonna get really hot really quick here. 2.2 kilowatt, 86 amps into the battery there. And the fans kick in right away. Okay, here we go. So, 2.89. So that's almost, almost a kilowatt right there. 2.63 is measuring here, 2.89. So you can see the inefficiency there. We'll calculate that at the end. Let's put another load in there so we can get up to the three kilowatt. All right, so now I have a 700 uh, watt load. It's my vacuum and that is right outside over there in the garage. So it's just too noisy, way too noisy. So now I'm gonna start loading this guy, see here. Okay, there we go, 1.25 kilowatt, right? Let's see this guy, I'm gonna turn this guy on. So there we go, we're at 2.63. Let's do this one slower. There we go. Two and a half. I'm just trying to see. Okay, there we go, 2.29 kilowatt, all right? Okay, here we go. Two point eight eight. Well, this is handling it pretty 
pretty good. 3.11. Okay, so it'll do 3.1. Let's take a look on the thermal side. So you can see that the inverter is getting hot on that side. That's where the MOSFETs are at. You can see that the cables are getting hot there. Oh yeah, let's look at the cables here. Uh, those cables are around 40 degrees C. 41 right there. Where these ones are at 38, right? So these guys are Ooh, those little ones are at 40. And then those DMSs are at 45, almost 50. And that is at 120 amp load, right? This cable seems to be doing fine. Almost at 50 degrees there. All right, so after a few minutes, I actually this breaker on this guy these are rated at around 1500 watts so 1500 and 700 over there yeah i think i'm pushing about 2000 watts on this guy so that's what gave up all right after 10 minutes or so uh the inverters around 54 degrees c right on that edge right there uh the cables are around 65 maybe 64 where uh, the other ones are around 40, 40 degrees, right? So there we go. Those will support around 120 amps without getting too hot. They're hot, but not too hot. As far as our battery is concerned, there you go. Yeah, that stuff is hot over there. The BMSs are hot. All right, so this unit has a 6,000 watt surge power, right? Let's see if I can create a surge above 3,000 watts here. The way I'm going to try and track it is by setting my clamp here to minimum max. And I think what it does, it'll just lock on the max. Wait a minute. What is this OL stuff? So it turns out I can't do it on the DC side. Hopefully it's not going to overload this one and we'll be able to see what the inrush current this thing, uh, this load is pulling, and then if it if it matches the 6,000 watts that it's uh, rated at, right? Okay, let's do that again. Inrush. Reset this thing. Let's start it. Let's do that again. All right, so it overloads at 33, 33 times 120. That's about 39.60. So maybe around round up to 4,000 watts. Uh, so this 6,000 watt surge might not be as accurate, right? It's, you got more like 4,000 watt surge power. All right, so overall, I'd say this is a pretty decent inverter. 4,000 watts of surge. I'd say that's good enough to start most of the small to medium size power tools, right? So you can use this on a, you know, off-grid job site, for example, where you can want to run a skill saw or a table saw or a router or something like that. On the RV side of things, you know, small to medium applications where two lead acid batteries are used, or in this case, if you want to try and use lithium batteries like we're doing here. Now you could also use this to build your own DIY solar power pack, right? And I have a video where I built one of these uh, portable power packs, right? That are very, very powerful, but portable and can be used in an emergency situation, right? I invite you to watch that video so you can get ideas on how you can build your very own portable uh, power pack system using this 3000 watt inverter. I want to thank Gian Dell for sending me this unit to review and to make things more interesting I am going to give it away to one of you All you have to do is share this video and comment down in the comment section within the first five hours 
of this video going up. So if you're one of the subscribers to the channel that get notified, you will have a slight advantage to the rest of the people that are gonna end up watching this video. And if you're not, you should click on that notification bell so that in the future giveaways, you can be notified and you can take part of the giveaway, right? Well, thanks for watching this video. We'll see you guys on the next one.